Today we'll talk to Mike Corey, KI1U, the co-author of Storm Spotting and Amateur Radio, about what makes ham radio operators so valuable to the National Weather Service. Mike is also part of the Skywarn Recognition Day Committee and a net control operator for the VOIP Hurricane Net. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Steve. How are you doing? Good. Hey, you've written the book, literally, on storm spotting. In fact, storm spotting and amateur radio is now in its third edition, having just been published by ARRL. So, Mike, what can hams expect to learn from that book? Well, uh, you know, I think uh, whether you're just getting into storm spotting or you've you've been doing it for for many years, like myself, um, it it presents some old information uh, new again, and it also presents some new information. Uh, you know, that's uh, like most of the things that we do. Uh, it, it's it, it's uh, it's ever changing, and the book captures some of that. Could you give us more detail of what's in the actual book? Yeah, sure. So the uh, the book, which is designed to complement the Skywarn training provided by the National Weather Service, the book really does focus on the amateur radio aspect of Skywarn. So it covers things like some of the history behind volunteer storm spotting, which really goes back to long before Skywarn was a program. So it covers the history. It covers things like safety and training. And training is something that evolves over time. So that's with each edition of the book, we've had to re, uh, reevaluate how training is being offered. It talks a little bit about the equipment you want to use and some of the considerations. It doesn't quite get into the point that it goes into great detail. There's other books like the Operating Manual or the Handbook that would cover that. But it does give you some sense of what you need to be looking at when you're purchasing radios and accessories to do storm spotting. Uh, Vic Morris, AH6WX, does a fantastic job of covering the meteorological aspects of, of uh, storm spotting. Goes into uh, uh, one chapter is dedicated entirely to general meteorology. A portion of another is, is dedicated to hurricane meteorology. And then it also goes into the activation process. What, what should you expect when... Um, when you get that message, so for the Boston office, uh, which I volunteer with, an email will go out. It says storm spotter activation ne necessary. So what do you do once you see that message? What are the first steps that you take? And then it even goes into, and this is an important part of it, and this is, I think this is something that as amateur, as radio amateurs, we sometimes forget the importance of, and that is what do you do after the fact? And that's the after action process reviewing what what was done, what worked, what didn't work, what were the lessons learned, and how do we improve for next time? So that's a, that's a critical component, whether it's uh, Skywarn storm spotting and areas activation or even something like field day. It, it's important to go back and do that analysis and review. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Mike. This has been very informative. Appreciate it. Very welcome.